Hey everyone, this is Russ from Retro Game Core. It's been a while since I've done a Retroid Pocket 2 video, and part of that stems from the fact that I've been waiting for an operating system update. It was supposed to come out in October, well it's finally dropped, it came out on Christmas Eve. So I'm going to walk you through today in this video how to install it, and some of the nice features with it. The first thing you want to know about it is that it runs much faster than Android 6.0. Now in terms of game performance, it seems like everything is playing just like it did before, maybe a little bit faster, but I can't really tell the difference. What I do see a difference in is the user interface. I used to hate the Android 6.0 interface, it was so laggy and buggy. This seems a lot faster and a lot more in tune with the user's needs, and part of that probably comes from the fact that it's running Android 8.1 instead of Android 6.0. So a couple nice things about it is the fact that it runs Steam Link at a full screen resolution now. You also have app multitasking, so you can switch between apps fairly quickly. And it also gives you an indicator of when you're in mouse mode or in gamepad mode. So without any further delay, let's get into it. So I'll have a written guide linked below and that'll show you everything you need to do, but I also want to mention the fact that I got most of this information from the Retroid Handheld Discord, so if you're not a member already of that, go ahead and join it and I'll leave a link in my guide below. So first things first, you're going to want to download the update file from Google Drive. It's about 1.1 gigabytes altogether, so it's going to take a little bit of time to download. Once you have it downloaded, go ahead and extract it to your computer. And inside you're going to see a bunch of folders, as well as a change log, which will show you all the updates in Android 8.1, and then also a Word document which will walk you through the installation. And basically this is all I used. I just went through the Word document and followed it line by line, but I'm going to show you how to do that. I'm also going to do an HDMI out of my Retroid Pocket 2 on the bottom left corner, so you'll be able to see on both screens what I'm doing. Okay, so the first thing you're going to want to do is back up some of your important files. So on your Retroid Pocket 2, use the mouse mode and then pull from the top down in order to bring up that top menu. And then go to USB for charging and then go to file transfers. That'll allow you to access all the files on the internal storage of your Retroid Pocket 2. So one thing to bear in mind is that when you reinstall the new operating system, it's going to reinstall all of your apps. So you're going to lose all your configuration files and everything else. So the first thing you want to do is go in here and grab all of your save files from the folders. You're going to want to get your configuration files from RetroArch. Whatever it is you think you need to save, grab them now. Personally, I like starting from a new slate, and I didn't have any games that I was in the middle of playing, so I didn't worry about your save files, but this is how you would go and do it. So for example, you can go into the RetroArch folder. And then you can pull up the saves, and there you'll find your save games. You can just grab these, save them onto your computer, and then you can drag them back onto your internal storage once you flash the new operating system. Same thing with the Nintendo 64 emulator. You can just go into the game data folder, and then pick your game, and then grab the save files. It's really up to you what you want to save, but this is the way to do it. So once you have all your backups saved, go ahead and go into your update folder, and we're going to actually start doing the update. So go into your RP2 key backup tools folder first. And then there's going to be an app called ADB Driver Installer. Go ahead and open that up. And then on the bottom right, there's a button that says install. Just go ahead and click on that button. For me, it already said that I had the ADB driver already installed. I don't know when that happened, but I do have it installed. But if you don't have it, it'll install there for you. So go ahead and close that one out next. Now make sure you're still plugged into your computer, and then you're going to see two batch files. One is called Key Backup, and the other one's called Key Restore. Go ahead and open up the one that says Key Backup. And this will just take a minute, and it'll disappear when it's done running. Then you'll see there's a file called Device Key. And check the timestamp on it. Make sure it's the same time that you just ran it. If that worked, then you're good. You have your key saved. Okay, so now we're ready to actually flash the file. Turn off your Retroid Pocket 2 and unplug it from your computer, and then go into the SP Flash folder. Then you're going to find a program called Flash Tool, and it might show you an error just at the beginning. Go ahead and hit OK. Now in this Flash Tool, you have to set specific files, so I'll walk you through that right now. Under Download Agent, that first file, Go ahead and select the bottom one in this main SP Flash folder, which is called MTK All in One. For the next one, go into the Android 8.1 v2 folder and then pick that Android scatter file there. And you should see a bunch of files pop up. And finally, the last thing you want to do is go to the drop down menu on the left and then select Format All Plus Download. After that, you want to hit the download button 
and then plug your Retroid Pocket 2 back into your device without powering it back on. If all goes well, it'll start this formatting tool here and it'll take a few minutes to run through everything. You should get a big green check. If you don't see a big green check at the end of this, you're going to have to run it again. It's not a big deal to redo it because you've already backed up your keys at this point. Okay, now you need to unplug the Retroid Pocket 2 and then power it on. And then it'll optimize all of your apps as it's starting up Android for the first time. And surprisingly, it'll actually boot into the Retroid Pocket 2 operating system, not the Android operating system. So you need to hold down the home button for a few seconds. And then when the menu pops up, go ahead and select switch system. And it'll take a moment to reboot. And then here you are, you're in Android 8.1. Now we still have a few more things to do to make sure everything works perfectly. First thing you want to do is plug it back into your computer and then go down and do the same thing again where you're going to go to the USB charging this device and then select transfer files again. That'll give us access to the internal storage as well as the SD card. Okay, so going back to our update folder, go ahead and go into the RP2 key backup tools folder again. And then instead of doing the key backup, do the key restore this time. And this is going to load the key onto your device. And it takes just a second. Once it's done, this window will close again. You'll know it works when it forces a reboot of your Retroid Pocket 2 right then and there. Okay, so now you have your Android device all keyed up and ready to go. So the last thing we're going to do at this point is we're going to reinstall all of the apps that come with your device. Now, according to the instructions, all you're supposed to do is connect to the SD card on your device, and then there's going to be a folder called pre-install on there, and that's supposed to have all the apps, and then you reinstall them. But when I checked my SD card, I did not have that at all on my device. So I had to go and look around for it, and I found the original files, and so I'm going to leave a link to them in my written guide if you also don't have them in your SD card. So if you're like me and you didn't have this pre-install folder on your SD card when you booted it back up, it's really easy. All you have to do is follow the instructions on my written guide to find the link. So this file is called SD card backup version three. It's about 884 megs altogether. So just go ahead and download that. And once it's done downloading, go ahead and open it up with an extractor. And then all you need to do is just grab that pre-install folder. You don't need anything else at this point. Now, all you want to do is drag that pre-install folder onto your SD card. Now, word to the wise, I actually tried to drag it over using my USB connection with the Retroid Pocket 2, and it took forever. It took about an hour and a half altogether to move this folder over because it has just a bunch of tiny little files which takes forever to move over. So my recommendation is just to pull out the SD card out of your device, plug that directly into your computer, and move the files over that way. It'll be much faster. Okay, so once you've got everything moved over to your SD card, go into that pre-install folder and you'll see this pre-install.sh file. What you need to do is update that sh file. So go back into your install folder, you'll find the pre-install file there, and then just drag it over to your SD card and replace it with the new one. At this point, all the work on your computer is done, so let's go over to the Retroid Pocket 2. You're going to want to scroll down to the toolbox section, and then you're going to find a command that says execute script. From there, just navigate to your SD card in the menu there on the top left. And then find the pre-install folder and then just click on that pre-install.sh file. And there you go, it'll just install all of those original apps directly onto your device at this point. There you go. At this point, you can actually just disconnect your Retroid Pocket 2 from your computer and you can do everything on your device at this point. And congratulations, at this point you have now successfully installed Android 8.1 on your device. So as you can see, as I'm moving through the menus here, everything is just a little bit zippier and a little bit quicker. It's not a huge difference. I would say it's about 25% faster, which to me is actually pretty significant because that was my big complaint was just how slowly this all ran. So every time you open up a new app, for example, RetroArch, which is my favorite way of playing games on the Retroid Pocket 2, you're going to have to re-enable all your permissions, and you're going to have to set up your playlists again, unless you move your config files over, it's all going to be up to you at this point. But for me, I just started fresh, so I'm just going to have to go through here and actually make my playlist and select everything. But first, let me just test the game to make sure it works okay.
I got a funny little notification here. It was asking me if I wanted to raise my volume too high, which I thought was kind of funny. But overall, everything plays great. Uh, I was actually very happy with how everything played on the Retroid Pocket 2. It plays the way that I expected them to from the previous version of Android 6.0, uh, but overall, I'm just happy that I didn't break anything at this point. Now to get to the Retroid operating system, you're gonna have to set up your Wi-Fi network first. So just go into the Wi-Fi settings and go and find your SSID and then input all your information. And then go over to Toolbox and then you'll see Install Retroid Pocket App. Just go ahead and click on that. And it'll download the app and then it'll install it onto your device. And then from there you can scroll down and you can find the Retroid app itself. And then that'll reboot into the Retroid Pocket system. The first time you boot it up, it's going to take a minute to load everything up, but after that it'll run a little bit smoother. So when you jump into the Retroid Pocket operating system, it's going to treat you like a new user all over again. So it's going to show you the menu tutorial and all that stuff. All you have to do is just press A to get through all of it. And here we are, we're back in the Retroid Pocket system. And you're probably familiar with this already, so I'm not going to get too much into detail. But I do want to show you a few things that are possible that I never noticed before. And I don't know if it's part of this update or if I'm just better at paying attention at this point, who knows. But if you tap the home button, you have all these new settings. So for example, you can go and you can change shaders and scaling and all sorts of other things. You can add frame skip, you can change your different input options. There's just a lot more options than I remember previously, which is really kind of nice. So for example, I'm going to go into the Nintendo here, and I'm just going to set up a video shader. I'm going to pick this pixelate one randomly. And it looks just terrible, so maybe there's a system that works well with this one, but it's not the Nintendo, I can tell you that right now. But one of the other shaders that works really well is the XBR shader. And this gives you like a scale 2x kind of feel, and I really like this shader. And so if you want to live in this Retroid operating system, you have a lot more options available to you, and some of these look really nice. And you could always just go back to your original pixelation if you like it that way anyway. And this works across all of the platforms. For example, here's Super Mario World with no shaders enabled. But then I can go into the settings and I can add that XBR as well. And look at that, it looks really great. And it doesn't slow down performance, which is pretty cool too. Overall, I'm actually a lot happier with the Retroid operating system than I was in previous videos. Now, once you connect to the internet, you can also enter into the game market and you can download your own games and stuff. I'm still not a fan of this option. I don't like the fact that you can just go and download games willy-nilly, but that option is there available for you if you want to take advantage of it. Overall, I think that the Retroid operating system is a lot closer to what they imagined when they first released this device back in August and September, and that's the fact that it's just a dead simple interface that allows you to get into the games without having to mess with settings. So going back to the Android side of things, here is the Nintendo 64 standalone emulator, and it runs nice and zippy. Now one of the things I noticed is the default settings have reverted back to 320 by 240 for the resolution, and that's half the resolution of the actual device, and they probably did that for performance, but personally I like to take advantage of every pixel, so you can go into the settings and under display you can change the rendered resolution back to 640 by 480 which is the native resolution of this device. And you can see here it looks really nice. And honestly, there's probably a little bit of stuttering when you have this high of a resolution, but personally, I would rather have a pretty picture that has just a little bit of stuttering than have to deal with a bad picture the entire time. But that's all up to you, it's all a personal preference. PlayStation Portable runs pretty well, you can see here with Daxter. I'm running with an auto frame skip of 1 on here, and often I don't even need to tap into that frame skip, which is really nice. Now this isn't going to solve every challenge, for example you can see here with Jack and Daxter, even with the auto frame skip of 1, it's still just kind of jittery and very frame skippy kind of feeling, you know, everything just kind of jumps too quickly. But overall I think this is very similar to the performance we already saw in the Retroid Pocket 2 before this operating system update. Now honestly, when I'm on Android, I prefer using RetroArch, it's just my favorite front end, and the menus are much more zippy than they were before, which is a really nice thing for me because it feels much better when I'm playing these games now. Performance-wise, I think they're exactly what they were, but it's just nice to be able to zip through the menus more quickly. 
Okay, let's show off a couple more features with this Android 8.1. In order to get to the Google Play Store, you have to go into the settings and actually enable Google Apps. But once that's set up and once you sign in, you can access the Google Play Store just like you have before. But the nice thing is that there are more games that play on Android 8.1 than those that play on Android 6.0. So if there was a game you were waiting to try from the Google Play Store, it might be available for you now. And then it looks to me like Steam Link has gotten a little bit of an upgrade as well. You know, the interface feels the same and everything else, but when you actually jump into a game, it seems like they've updated the resolution to take advantage of the entire screen. And I don't know if this is just because I happened to pick Grand Theft Auto 3 and it worked perfectly, but overall, this was an issue I had previously that I'm not seeing now, is that I get to have a full screen app. Now, one of the disadvantages is the right stick doesn't work out of the box, so you're going to have to go and configure that yourself. You can see here I'm not able to use the right analog stick. But you know, overall, I'm really happy happy with this Android 8.1 system. It's a lot zippier. It obviously doesn't fix all the hardware issues. So for example, I still don't like the plasticky feel of the device itself. I think the buttons are too flush with the device and they're too clicky, you know. I've never been a big fan of this right analog stick, which is really just like a digital slider. And then also finally that D-pad. The D-pad's really clicky and doesn't feel very good in the hands. So yeah, the hardware obviously has not been updated, but the software really does make it a much more compelling device. So if you have a Retroid Pocket 2 and you aren't playing it that much because maybe you have other devices or whatever, or maybe you were disappointed in it, I would encourage you to think about installing Android 8.1 because honestly, this made me like my device a lot more than I did previously, just for one simple operating system upgrade. And my hope is that this video guide will help you install this new operating system without running into any issues. Personally, I haven't really played my Retroid Pocket 2 in a couple months now because I've been focusing on other devices, but after installing this new Android operating system and kind of jumping back into it and all the possibilities you can get for an $85 device, it kind of made me fall in love with this thing again. I really do like my Retroid Pocket 2. And honestly, even though I still prefer my Ambernic RG351P over the Retroid Pocket 2, there's still a lot to love about this little device. All right, everyone, that's it for this video. I hope you found it helpful. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below or if there are specific Retroid Pocket 2 things you want to see in a future video, and I'd love to take them into consideration. Be sure to like and subscribe if you found this helpful, and we will see you next time. Happy gaming.